Hello everyone and welcome to another Carbon 60 video by me, K. Elmer, and in this video I'd like to talk about the vacuum pumps that we use when we're filtering out our C60 oil. Um, what kind of came up in the chat room uh, a while ago was a discussion about pumps, which ones were better and so forth. And then uh, it seems like uh, several folks have been kind of migrating to stronger pumps to kind of sh shorten the time frame it takes to, to filter the oil. And so I kind of decided that I would go ahead and, and do a test and kind of figure it out. And then, you know, I told everybody I'd do a video on it. So here you go. This is the video of me dinking around with some pumps uh, to see what would happen and, and, and how difficult it was to set them up and things. So uh, I'd been using, like most of you, I'd been using the Filter 8 vacuum pump I got about a year ago. Uh, and that, that guy is, you know, was doing doing fine. Um, and then uh, this there's a new one now that it looks just like it, but it's black. It's called the Swift vacuum pump. And then this is the Kazi vacuum. Uh, you know, industrial uh, vacuum pump that I bought that a lot of folks are considering buying or have already bought. And so this is the one that I got. So just trying to compare the, the three different ones. I did a little video, so let me kind of walk you through it. Now the very first thing, now with the Kazi vacuum is so different than the other two because it's like this little industrial motor. Uh, it requires oil. And so it comes with a, a bottle of oil that you have to put into the, into the pump. And so, kind of walk you through that. Uh, this is the exit, uh, the, actually the exhaust port. And also, when you unscrew it, it's where you pour the pump oil in. So you have to take this this cap off, pour the whole bottle of oil in. It comes out where the oil line is going to be between min and max. So that's how you. That's the very first thing you do is put the oil in. And then this little brass thing right here is the intake nozzles. Now the intake nozzles on this on this specific pump are, there's two of them. There's this side on the right, which is one quarter inch, and then the one on the top is a half inch. And so now the thing about this model, and because I, I haven't you know bought the other models, but this specific model, it doesn't come with any tubing. Um, and so, uh, it, and it doesn't... Uh, have any type of nozzle that you can put on that intake so that you could fit a tube on it right and so now i've known that other people have actually you know used different tubing to just kind of cover the whole thing and so forth but you know thank you to whoever posted on the chat room but uh, they said that there's a nozzle you could stick on that thing as a half inch nozzle uh so you could actually use this little uh adapter and it just screws right onto the top of of the intake valve and so there you go so that makes it so much easier to deal with is you need this little nozzle it's an extra little piece uh, everything i'm talking about today the links are in the video description so once you get this nozzle it's so much easier to connect uh the tubing so now the other thing was that there's a, there's a huge issue with which is exhaust this thing's a motor it exhausts uh, vapors and so uh when you, when i first turned it on it was just spewing um this oil vapor and it was difficult to breathe and so i was kind of choking on it and so i decided i would uh, do a makeshift exhaust filter so i went to the, my local uh, pet smart and i bought uh, some aquarium stuff i bought some activated charcoal bags and i got this gravel vacuum and to in order to make shift um, an exhaust filter so this is what i did everybody does something different obviously the only reason by the way the only reason i had to do this was i, I don't have a counter near a window so if i could i would have just stuck the tube out the window you know the other end of the exhaust tube but i can't i'm stuck inside so i basically took the end of the tube covered it up with activated charcoal wrapped it up in cheese cloth and made an exhaust filter there's it so now this is uh the setup that i did and and the and the little this is what i want to point out about this little uh pyrex cup of water that's boiling water and i and i really needed to use that to get the tubes to fit on but once i could put that in there for 30 seconds and make it pliable then i could start fitting the uh, the different tubes up to the different filters and it went really well but highly recommend you know the old trick of just you know putting your uh, end of the tube in boiling water so now that's the tube from the the gravel filter it fits perfectly if you notice right there it fits perfectly on the inside of the exhaust port and so uh, it, it comes out it goes around the corner and then it's that little uh, makeshift uh, exhaust filter so this is the test that i ran um, I hooked up the filtrate. This is a 500 milliliter, 500 milliliter, and a thousand milliliter uh, disposable filters. Um, there's a olive oil, C60 olive oil that had been um, using pulverized C60. It basically uh, went through the one week stirring. It's on occasion. 
uh, 10 day settle, 10 micron filter, 10 day settle, and now this is the stage it's at. This is avocado in the exact same state. This is MCT oil, MCT oil, uh, stir for two weeks, settle for 10 days, ready to filter. Okay, you don't have to do a pre-filter. These had been pre-filtered, but with a 10 micron. So now it's all ready to go. Everything's ready to go at 0.22, which is each one of these three filters. And so I've got 500 milliliters of olive oil ready to go with the filter eight. I've got 500 milliliters of avocado to go with the Swift. And then I've got 1000 milliliters of MCT oil ready to go with the Kazi vacuum. And that's the test. It's kind of like a little race to see which one goes first. And so uh, this is the setup. And like I said, you know, it really helped to use the, the boiling water trick uh, to get the hoses to all fit. Um, and in that, it did work. So everything worked really well. Uh, the hose uh, size is the, uh, I believe it's the 5 16th inch, uh, just regular aquarium air tubing. You can just get that anywhere. It's super cheap. Uh, and so uh, I did have to um, use quite a bit of it. So because uh, this doesn't come with tubing and the tubing that came with the Swift was all bent up so I just threw that away and I just used my own. So this was the setup. Now as you can see right immediately uh, the MCT oil just starts pouring and so it worked really really well uh, and the other thing about the exhaust fumes coming out of the other end of the of the Kazi vacuum uh, was interesting because I'll, I'll show you in a second. You see that? The, see all this mist right here? Yeah all that mist uh, it's still coming out, you know, uh, but just like, uh, you know, like a, a filter on a car or something, um, that mist was breathable. I, it wasn't so uh, hard to breathe. And so it just would still mist out uh, like this, but it, it wasn't as bad as the first time when I didn't have anything to kind of just suck up the oil or whatever's coming out of that thing. So, you know, so, the, so the, it kind of worked, but it wasn't perfect. Now, the next thing I want to kind of share with you is this. At about the... 300 milliliter mark when this thing had filled up about 300 milliliters I just heard this huge crack I was filming the exhaust filter and it was just big crack you know and then I, I ran I turned around the corner and just this whole thing the whole bottom of it just imploded uh, due to the pressure of the vacuum that this little motor had created so oh I, it was it was my first instinct was throw it to, you know throw the paper towels down pour out the funnel into a jar uh, and then you know and then of course pick up the camera and, and keep rolling so uh, so let me show what happened and, and you know in, in hindsight I should have I should have known I should have figured this out. I should have known that this was going to happen it didn't even occur to me that I would blow the filter but look at the giant crack in the bottom the thing just imploded right and, and uh, you know in hindsight yeah that makes sense but I'll tell you you know Oh, so anyway, I, I wasted 300 milliliters of a very expensive brain octane C60. Uh, and so uh, first lesson learned, you can't use a Kazi Rev or Kazi, <laughs> Kazi Vacu um, motor with a plastic filter. Okay, so this is where I stand. At 15 minutes, these two are still going. On the side, I'm just, I had to clean the whole thing up. And then I had to set up my, my glass rig and plug that into the Kazi vacuum. And so it worked. But here's here's to show you we're at 15 minutes. The the Swift is just is just, just cranking away and there's almost nothing coming out of the, the filter eight. But so this is what I, I did. This is take two on the on the MCT oil. I only had about seven hundred milliliters left. <laughs> and then so I poured it in and started filtering away. Uh, by the way, this is like the, the residue from the letting it settle. And so it's just cranking away. I mean, it's still 0.22, right? And so this is at uh, 30 minutes. Uh, the, the, other, the other filter uh, <laughs> fell out of the race. But uh, the two, these two are still going at it with each other. And as you can see, the Swift is cranking. And then here you go on the side. It's like uh, my 700 milliliters of MCT oil. And it's done. 14 minutes. Boom. So, you know, clearly the bigger motor is stronger and it's going to run faster and do better. And so I highly recommend this guy uh, for the fact that, you know, boy, it makes it so much faster. Uh, and, th and that's really a big deal when you're filtering, you know, liters worth. So uh, totally, totally uh, dig that. Now, if you don't have that... Uh, you know, patient or the, the, the rush to have to get it done. Uh, you know, you go back to these two guys and here you go. Um, at 60 minutes, the Swift is almost finished. And look at that. It's, you're not even, it's just, just like nothing uh, for the filter eight. So uh, it's clear that the, the Swift was, uh, uh, you know, really, really, really uh, much, much, much stronger. It's like one hour, 20 minutes and boom, it was done. So the whole 500 milliliters. So what I did was I just unplugged the, uh, the olive oil from the filter eight. I plugged in the Swift, and as soon as I turned it on, watch, I just turned it on, and it's starting to come out. 
this was the olive oil connected to the filter eight. So that just kind of shows that um, that you know clearly. Whoops, uh, that's not right. Okay, clearly, uh, you know the uh, the Swift was was doing a lot better. So these are the three pumps. Let's talk about prices now and stuff. So the thing that's real interesting was that. In the product specs, the Filter 8 and the Swift are pretty much the same strength in terms of the ability to uh, create a vacuum uh, in cubic feet per minute. So uh, one was like 3.0 liters per minute, and this was 3.3 liters per minute if you read the product um, descriptions. The intake nozzles are the same size, and the prices are almost close. The Swift is a little bit more expensive, which is interesting because it, it doesn't have the, the case, and it doesn't have the, the better tubing. So um, the tubing quality is not that great. Uh, there's no case um, and there's no rubber connector that helps you uh, fit onto the the glass funnel and so that was that was interesting uh, and then but the filter eight does come as a complete kit now the kazi vacuum as as i noted uh, it was it was really strong as 4.5 uh, cubic feet per minute I, you know honestly i have never bought vacuum pumps until a year ago I don't know anything about vacuum pumps, but I know a lot more now, and you do too, that you have to really take a look at how strong that thing uh, can suck, I guess is the best way to put it. And so there's a 4.5. I bought the middle of the road for $79.99. Uh, it has, you know, the intake uh, quarter inch and half inch. But, you know, there's a 3.01, which I probably should have bought the cheaper one, which was $54, bucks, uh, and started out small. I didn't really think about it. This is the one that popped up on Amazon, and I just bought it, right? So, uh, so you know, uh, it's a little bit too strong. Uh, but... You know, it works really great with the glass, so, you know, it, it really depends. Now, it doesn't come with any tubing, doesn't come with nozzles, and it requires oil. So just keep in mind that you need to buy the uh, nozzle for it, you need to buy the tubing for it, um, and, and, you know, in order to get it to, to you know, to use it. Uh, and so, uh, by the way, all of the these three filters, or the links to them are in the video description below the video. And so, now the overall test results, i just kind of walk you through it. At the end of the day, I've thought about this for a while before making this video and you know I honestly think that the filter rate being the same strength and it's a year old I really believe that I, I suspect that usage affects performance I think that because I have used it for a lot of hours I mean geez I've done over a couple dozen batches and I've left that thing running for like days before so I think I've put a lot of hours on it and I think because it's like like a little tiny pump um, and it, I think I just really beat the crap out of it and, and because it's got a lot of usage that it really affected the performance. I think in hindsight I should have bought a brand new filter rate and compared a brand new filter rate to a brand new Swift. So for if you, so you know, so I don't want to disparage the fact that the filter rate was so slow in this test. It was a year old. Uh, so in hindsight, you know, we're all so much smarter in hindsight. So, but you know, but I, so I definitely think that these little guys, they're not going to last for more than a year before you see how slow it got, right? There's the way to look at it. Uh, and so clearly, uh, you know, for 40 bucks, go get a new one after a year. Uh, but the Swift, if you're going to get a new one, you know, obviously the Swift works just as well. Uh, but, you know, the thing was, was that if I were to buy another little one again, I'd probably buy another filter eight because it comes with really good tubing and it comes with the case. So, but because I have both, I kind of just threw the filter eight away and put the Swift in the case and with the tubing. So I have a, I have a nice little set now. That's so, and I'm I'm good to go for batches. I don't have to worry about and, and I'm not rushing to finish. Now the Kazi Vacuum, as I said, this uh, the smallest model is a 3.0. This one I bought was a 4.5, and and yeah, it will blow your plastic filters up uh, and so that was a really learning experience because I didn't think that was going to happen uh, but again in hindsight I should have expected that so you know uh, but anyway uh, the exhaust as you saw was a huge issue and if I could stick it out the window I would have but I couldn't so uh, I did the best I could and you know when I ran it for 14 minutes I did have the, the kitchen fan on and it was bearable but my house got really cloudy <laughs> and so I had to open the doors and air out everything and, and so I don't recommend uh, using that pump in a in a in an unventilated area where you have the windows closed and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, exhaust is clearly an issue. Uh, you do need to buy an intake nozzle. I think that's another like eleven bucks or so, and you need to buy your own tubing. So it doesn't come with anything except the oil itself. So uh, you know it has issues. It's great. It works fantastic, uh, but you have to deal with its issues, right? So well, that's life, right? Anyway, so I'm glad uh, I'm glad you joined me. Thank you so much for paying attention, and I uh, hope you learned something. I did. 
and I'm just really happy to be able to share it with you. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I do appreciate uh, every, everything you guys do and say. I, I really, I've learned so much from the people in the chat room that you guys don't realize that. I learn from you uh, as much as you learn from me. And that's the whole point of this, uh, is that we know we're all doing this for our, the betterment of our health and our family's health and the ones we love. So, uh, you know, let's help each other, right? It's a positive thing. So anyway, so if you haven't already done so, join our C60 Telegram chat group. This is a group of folks that make C60 oil. Uh, some of them are uh, re, you know, our sellers and some of them are just you know like me that I just make it for myself and my loved ones. Uh, and then there's also different other groups. There's a, a group of just uh, there's you know just one chat room just full of testimonials. There's another chat room uh, of a g bunch of guys that have decided to build an arc reactor and start making C60. Uh, so that's real interesting. Those guys are just cranking away building reactors and stuff, and they're talking about it. So you can go talk with them and if you want to do that. And then there's of course the rest of us that are making C60 oil. So I just want to say thank you. You're more than welcome to join our C60 Telegram chat group. If you have any questions, you're new to this, you want to learn, uh, you know, come on down and ask away, and, and we're all a bunch of friendly folks, and we'll be happy to help you. Otherwise, thank you so much, uh, and have a great day. Aloha.